welcome back to the channel. My name is Alea, and if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. If you're gonna want to join the tribe over here, where we speak about all things fashion, entrepreneurship, and lifestyle. So, whoa, welcome. I am back on YouTube. If you have just made it to this video for the first time, I have not posted on YouTube in probably over a year. Um, so I'm back on YouTube. I have committed myself to 2024 being more active and proactive on YouTube. I have a lot of goals that I want to reach. I should have been monetized by now, but you know, consistency, it takes time. Life is going on. It takes time. But I definitely still have supporters on here that watch my channel when I do drop a video randomly. So I definitely wanted to come back on here and build my audience. So a lot has happened since my last video. A lot has happened. Life has been happening. But let's just start off with all the good news. <coughs> Excuse me. First of all, if you don't know, I started my own clothing company. My clothing company is called Lay Madam Apparel. We offer exquisite, elegant, women apparel it's an exclusive online store i'm actually planning to launch this march march 20th 2024 if everything goes as planned because being an entrepreneur it's hard when you got everything on you you know i do all the marketing the advertising i'm handling the inventory i'm managing the website you know i got a team over here that's editing my photos i'm creating the content, I'm scheduling the content, I'm posting the content, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm handling the influencer campaigns. Like I have a lot going on. That's what's been going on. I've been over here trying to be an entrepreneur and it's just been a lot. It's been hard uh, doing everything. I actually just got my first two influencers last week. So I'm very happy about that. Um, so I'm waiting to see how that content comes out, but I will have the links and all of that in the description below. So do not worry. So you can go online and shop and check out your girl's clothing company, because this is going to be like, kind of like New York and company. That's kind of like what I'm kind of going for, but you know, upscale business entrepreneur. This is actually one of our outfits right here. I'm going to show y'all. It's a jumpsuit. Maybe if I back back a little bit so y'all can see. But it's a business jumpsuit. Um, I love it. Um, I've really been into blue lately. I love royal blue. I love color. You'll see a lot of color of my brand here and here. You'll see a lot of color, royal blue, reds, yellows, pinks, like we're very statement pieces is really where I went with my brand. Um, I wanted something that was going to stand out, that looks classy, that looks elegant. We're really going for entrepreneur women, women who are public speakers or they're realtors or they, they go to a lot of different events where they're networking with people. That's kind of more of the type of attire that I offer, but I also offer day to night wear where it's dressy enough for them to wear to their work occasion, but it's also dressy enough for them to go to an, a dinner party or their afternoon affairs as well. It's because we know as entrepreneurs, we're very busy. And sometimes we don't want to have to come home and change and try to find something to wear. We, we like to have our outfits planned throughout the week and on schedule. So my outfits are very versatile, if that makes sense. They can be worn to work or they can be worn to an event. So I think that's kind of my niche and kind of what separates us from other boutiques and brands online. But that's just a little bit about my company of as you know i'm also the face of my brand i'm a model of my brand as well 
Um, so I'm just very, that takes up a lot of my time, but I definitely wanted to come back to YouTube because this is a good way for me to build an audience and connect with people and actually just kind of share my story of being a fashionpreneur and all of that. Um, if you don't know, I also started a second YouTube channel. It's called the Fashion Guru channel. And over there, I actually teach women, like-minded women who want to start boutiques fashion brands or anything that's fashion career related, they can follow that channel and actually learn a lot of advice and tips on how to get started. With me been doing this for two years, even though it's not 10 years, I know a good deal about stuff about starting a brand, starting a boutique, vendors, sourcing, merchandise, pricing, all the duties because I've been there doing it. I'm doing it now. Um, so I just love to give back and teach what I do. So I'll also have that link in the description as well. If you guys want to follow that channel to kind of learn more about the fashion business side over here, I speak about it a little bit, but really more over here, I'm really being more personal with my everyday life and also just kind of talking about entrepreneurship in general and just kind of being a little bit more personal about Alea. But if you want to really learn more about the fashion business side, if that's something that you're interested in or that's a niche that you're interested in, then that will be a channel that you can also watch as well. Um, in addition to that, I've really just been focusing on my health. Um, if you don't know, I deal with GERD. I have acid reflux disease and it is a disease that has pretty much taken over my life. I deal with it pretty much every single day. Um, and it is basically acid reflux. Um, in addition to that, I've been dealing with IBS symptoms where I've been getting a lot of gas, a lot of bloating, um, a lot of cramping, abdominal pain, a little bit of constipation. So that having that kind of health concern and trying to be a content creator and an entrepreneur is very, very hard. So I give it to myself that I'm actually able to come on here today and actually film this video because literally every day, sometimes I don't feel good. Um, so I've really been prioritizing my health, my diet, what I eat, trying to exercise more, trying to meditate more, just trying to do things to keep me going and feeling encouraged and motivated because when you are having stomach and gut issues it affects your mood and it affects your productivity to want to do things so some days i'm very lazy and i get upset because people are rooting for me people want to see me make it at the top i want you know my fashion brand to hit seven figures i want the fashion academy to grow i want to be monetized on youtube I want to do all these different things, right? What I have to take care of myself first, because if I'm not taking care of me, it can't happen. And so I had to take time off to get myself together. And I'm pretty sure everybody can understand that. Um, in addition to, you know, family concerns and relationship concerns, you know, just life. Things have been lifing around here. But I'm back. It is March 14th, 2024. So we are only two and a half months in into the new year. So I still have the rest of the year to hit my goals. If you guys keep watching the channel, because you will re relate with something on this channel, whether it be lifestyle habits, whether it be fashion, style, entrepreneurship, or sometimes I just like to do a little tea time and chit chat and talk about some things. You will gain something from this channel. And that's why I'm here. I have always been a people-oriented person. I've always been an extrovert. I have a sales background. I like speaking to people. I speak to business owners. I talk to people over the phone. I sell things to people. So being on YouTube was nothing for me. Coming on YouTube, I kind of got upset about it because I started YouTube three years ago. I started this channel specifically three years ago. I probably could have already been monetized right now, but I stopped because I was very intimidated about my quality of my video footage. I didn't like it compared to the bigger YouTubers that I was seeing. And I should not have stopped. But then again, life was still lifening then in 2020. So I just had to take a break and take care of myself, you know? And I'm pretty sure that's happened to a lot of YouTubers. 
But the whole deal is, is to not to give up. I come back, I come back stronger. I got an outline of content ready to put on YouTube. I know what I'm going for. I'm going to hit my goals. We're going to reach a thousand subscribers this year because I am committing myself to do that. Um, long as I have my health and my strength and I'm breathing, we hitting a thousand subscribers this year on this channel. OK, and we are going to grow and scale this channel for all things fashion, entrepreneurship and lifestyle. OK. And that's for any other YouTuber that feels like they wanted to give up because life was happening, whether it was a family situation or your children or your health, or you just didn't feel motivated and encouraged. I'm telling you, you can do this. People have motivated me on YouTube because I'm like, if they can do it, I can do it. They got kids and doing it. I don't even have kids. I'm not married. I'm single. I don't have children. So there is nothing that should be stopping me from hitting my goals. N nothing is in the way but me. I am my own uh, person that can stop any kind of goals from happening. And I'm not doing it this year. I have so many goals this year and it's going to happen. Um, trying to be a, a content creator and influencer is hard when you're trying to manage so many different platforms you got facebook instagram tiktok youtube lemon eight i think they on the verge of banning tiktok but i'm not quite sure yet i can't keep up with tiktok tiktok moves a little bit too fast for me but i have been on i'm mostly majority on instagram and facebook instagram seems a little bit more difficult to grow on i don't really know what it is um but Every platform, you get a different type of engagement and you reach different people. Um, so I've just kind of been testing different platforms out, trying to see, you know, exactly what, what works for me and how I should continue doing it. And I still learn every single day, you know, um, being a brand owner and an influencer, I feel like it's a plus because I get to be the brand and the influencer. I'm a fashion influencer myself. I also uh, uh, accept collaborations from brands as well. And then I own a clothing company. So I also recruit influencers. So I kind of get to see both sides of how that business relationship works. And that was just so interesting to me because when I was just an influencer before I started the clothing company, I did not know that these companies would just send you free merchandise because the companies that was reaching out to me, they were asking me to pay a percentage of the clothing or pay for shipping or something. And I didn't feel like it was unreasonable considering how much worth of goods you were getting. You know, if you're getting a $200 gift and they just ask you to pay a $10 shipping fee, here's the $10. But now according to bigger youth, uh, influencers, you're not supposed to pay for that. But me personally, I gift. Um, that's pretty much mostly what I, I do because we are still a small company. You know, we're not Fashion Nova. We're not J Lutz label, you know, so we are still growing. We are still building our brand awareness and identity. We are still trying to resonate with our audience. We are still trying to get our target audience to find us. We are still very in a very, very early upcoming clothing company, but just. back because I have improved when I look at how my content was looking in 2020 versus how it looks now it looks damn good all right I got a hair in my mouth oh lord all these malfunctions my content looks damn good on Instagram okay like the quality has improved the messaging has improved um the color coordination and the theme and the vibe has improved. 
pat yourself on the back. Sometimes as entrepreneurs, we really do not pat ourselves on the back to give ourselves the credit of what we've done. My business was not perfect in a year. It's been two years. It's still not going to be perfect. Okay. I learned something literally every single day. I've, I'm, I'm wearing 20 hats right now. I do have a few people doing things for me, but as I continue to scale and to grow, these duties are going to fall off and I'm going to be hiring people for everything. The only thing that I want to be doing in my business is probably not even handling the inventory. I probably will be at that point and hired an, uh, an, an, an inventory buyer, a buyer, because I don't, I don't have time for that. I just want to model. That's it. That's all I want to do is model, be in front of the camera. That's it. I'm have somebody, you know, social media manager, your inventory manager, your buyer, your website manager, you know, your videographer, your photographer, all these people. I probably won't even be packaging the packages because once you start to scale and you start to get up there hitting your six and seven figures, I don't want to be at home trying to pack up packages. Not that I can't do it. It's a great way to resonate with the audience. Of course, as I'm slowly going up, but once my momentum gets up here, I'm going to hire people for that. I'm not going to be at home doing packages. I have other things. Like I said, I have an academy that I want to start. I want to launch that before the end of the year. I also have, and I wasn't even going to mention this, I'm working on a jewelry brand that is actually going to launch this year as well. So I got a lot of different projects that I'm working on. So I cannot be here packing green packages once we, like, once we blow up. I got so many other things to do. And trying to be on YouTube, try to manage three brands and be on YouTube and be a content creator and an influencer and still work a part-time job. That's a lot, y'all. I don't even know how I'm doing it, but that's a lot. And so I have to give myself credit because a lot of people probably would have given up. This is a lot. It's a lot, but I know that it's going to damn pay off and I'm gonna come back on this video and watch it and say, oh, I remember when I was filming that video when it felt like everything was almost just falling apart and I was stressed out and going through this. But look at my bank account. Look at my bank account. Okay, because that is what's going to pay off. I didn't think it was going to be easy. I knew YouTube wasn't going to be easy. I knew I wasn't going to get monetized on YouTube within the first year because I knew. I was still getting into the groove. I didn't know I needed to plan my content. I didn't know there was SEO that needed to be done. I'm still learning things from YouTube, you know? So we're, nothing's going to be perfect. Everybody has their big break in whatever that they do. Actresses, they get their big break. Movie stars get their big break. Entrepreneurs get their big breaks. Everybody gets their big breaks, but it's the momentum. It's the consistency. Everything you do has to be consistent. Being an influencer, being consistent, being a YouTuber, being consistent, running a clothing brand, being consistent. Everything takes time. And when you're taking time on this, of course, you're sacrificing time from this. When you're doing stuff for this, you're second time from away from this. It's hard trying to be in 10 different places at the same time. So that's why everything has to be like on a schedule. I try to, what I feel like I'm probably going to be doing is bulk filming, bulk creating content for this brand, bulk creating content for that brand, and then just start popping it out, popping it out, popping it out, popping it out. Because what I learned is with YouTube, the reason why it's been so long is because I would film, post, film, post. I didn't, I don't do that with my clothing brand. I bulk create, I edit those photos and then I schedule it out. That way I could be on top because I post every single day on my Instagram for my clothing business. I don't miss a day. Now, 
when it comes to YouTube, trying to be consistent on here, knowing that this is a competitive platform, <laughs> I will have to bulk film because I don't have time out the day to be on here filming a video every single day when I got a company to run and grow and maintain, you know? So that's why I think a lot of people fall off of YouTube because they got so many different endeavors that they're trying to pursue at the same time and they having to have to pick and choose which one they can do because it's really, really, really hard to do everything. It really is, you know? I'm like, is my content, are people gonna watch my content? You know, being a YouTuber, people are very critical of themselves, they're critical of how they look. I don't have a video editor, I don't have time to edit a video. Dang, now I gotta edit a YouTube video. Now I gotta edit photos for the personal Instagram and for the business Instagram. You know, it's so much. It's so much content. It takes, content is draining. It's so draining. That's why everybody can't be an influencer because it's so draining to be on five different social platforms trying to post content. And that's why this girl, she told me, she said, one thing that I do is I repost. Whatever I post on this platform, I repost it over here. Okay, you could do that for so long. Okay, you're reposting, but you still got to produce new content. The content never stops. It keeps going. Okay, you know, just with fashion, there's always something new. There's always a new trend. There's always a new fabric, a new color, a new style. People want to differentiate. They want change. So, and me being in the fashion industry, I'm in a very, very competitive space where I'm, you know, in competition with a lot of other different boutiques and fashion brands and people who are offering similar stuff and a similar vibe to what I offer. I have to stand out. My models have to stand out. Our production and our quality has to stand out. Our messaging has to stand out. Our website has to stand out. Our packaging has to stand out, you know, because I want to have the best of the best. You know, I'm a very competitive person and I'm a huge fashionista and I really do keep up with stuff. So I have to make sure that my stuff is keeping up with the audience that I'm trying to reach, you know, because we are a little bit more on the luxurious side. Um, but we're not saying that everyday people can't purchase from our brand. You know, anybody can purchase anything today. You got people in the hood buying $300 lace fronts who really can't afford $300 lace fronts, but they're going to buy it because they're getting the money from somewhere. Even though they really can't afford to be spending that kind of money on their hair, people are going to buy what they want if they have the money for it. If they like it and then they think it looks good, they're going to buy it. Period. So anybody, just like anybody can buy a $300 lace front, anybody can buy something from my brand, you know? So we, it's okay that I have a target audience that I'm actually shooting for, but everyday people can purchase as well because I don't, you know, we don't know what's in their bank account. We are just delivering the, the message on the vibe that we're selling and the type of clothing that we offer. It's up to those people who are viewing to decide whether or not they feel that they are the customer for this. If this will look good on them, if this will fit them, if this is their style, where can they wear it to? You know, all those questions, you know, so I'm telling y'all, I can go on and on and on about this, but this is just me. I am still the same person when I started. I love to talk. I could talk about fashion. I could talk about entrepreneurship. I could talk about lifestyle. I could talk about chit chat, story time, all of that. But this is what's been going on. I just been focused on my health, focusing on my clothing company and focusing on other projects and really just trying to be that boss as fashionpreneur that I see myself being. I always see myself working for myself. That's really why I can't really do the nine to five because I don't see myself working under anybody. I just can't do it. Working a nine to five job, it doesn't make me happy. I understand that it's some kind of stability where you know what you're making, but it doesn't make me happy. Talking to people, being around people, being in front of the camera, 
And being around people who are in my same industry, that's what really makes me happy. Not being on a computer all day. You know, I, I did the whole corporate America thing. Working remotely from home is really what I'm into. I've been doing it for three years now. That's what I'm accustomed to because then I can do content for other different things. When you're getting up, going to a nine to five job and driving there, how are you at home filming a YouTube video? How are you packaging your orders for your business? How are you getting your content together for the rest of the week? You are putting half your day into somebody else's business. And so I knew I could not do both. You know, if anything, a part time job, but it's from home. So if it's from home, I can kind of work with that. But really, my ultimate goal is to ditch the freaking nine to five job, ditch corporate America, because I'm not here to build anybody else's dream. I'm here to build Alea's dream, my dream, my businesses, my endeavors. I'm not here to build anybody else's dream. You know, trying to climb the corporate ladder is not a guarantee. You go to college and get the education. They then say you don't have the experience to get the job. Then you got to start at the bottom and work your way up from an entry level position, thinking that you're going to be at the top salary position within two to three years. And then they say, oh, no, John Smith, he had 10 to 15 years of experience. We're going to give him the position. But yet they promise you the position in three years. It's a scam. It's a scam. It's a scam of your time, your time thinking that you're going to be promised to get to the next level and you're not going to get there because it's always going to be something that's going to come in and take the opportunity. It's, it never works out. I'm, t I'm so over corporate America because it never works out. They don't want to pay you what you worth. They either want to give you straight commission. There's no guarantee with being commissioned. I've done that, did that, did that, done that, got my life insurance license. It's still a hustle. You know, well, they'll tell you, oh, you can make 10K, 20K a month. Yes, it is possible with the right mentor. But the problem is, is finding the right mentor, finding the person that's going to walk through it with you, who wants to see you successful, who's going to sacrifice some of their time to where they're not making money so that you can make money. Everybody is not trying to help you. They're trying to build their agency, but they're not trying to give you the one on one support that you actually need to be successful. That's why entrepreneurship does, I mean, um, working nine to five did not really work for me. Cor I don't feel like corporate America was on my side. And I actually did a video about this a long time ago when I first started, it was one of the first videos. It was about how to balance entrepreneurship and nine to five. And it's really hard. You're sacrificing your dreams and your wants and your passions so that you can pay your light bill and keep a roof over your head. But are you really doing what you really want to do? Do you like getting up, having to have to get in the car and drive on the interstate and work for the white man and be underpaid and wait to get PTO and then get cut PTO and and then have to deal with companies that are at will that can let you go for any in any kind of reason? I don't want that kind of lifestyle. I dealt with that in Dallas where I showed up to work, was working somewhere, showed up to work. They told me, we're going to have to let you go. Let me go. Why? I've been showing up here on time, doing what I'm supposed to do like everybody else. Why would you be letting me go? Well, they don't have to tell you out there why they letting you go. It's called at will. And those are the pro, those are the cons of just honestly just working in corporate America. They don't have to tell you why they're letting you go. But yes, what? If you are like the only black person in the building, you probably kind of want an explanation because then it's leaving a door open for discrimination. And then you think they're just being racist. They're just trying to fire you for whatever reason because they don't have to tell you why they're letting you go. You know, I don't want that kind of lifestyle. I don't like it. Um, I don't agree with it. But I even know, you know, being having a clothing company or a business at all where you're having a team, I'm going to have to hire people and I may still have to fire people 
So I'm still going to be doing some of those exact same things that they do in corporate America, because everybody who comes on with your business is not going to stay with you for the long run. People are going to move around. They're going to be, you know, people just won't change. They may work for you for maybe a year or two or three years. And then it's like they don't want to manage a, a, a fashion company anymore. They want to go into IT and do something else. They want to go to a tech company. So I may be hiring people all, you know, and then again, this is what you call hiring people because you can hire somebody to hire people. You know, I want my business on automate. I want everybody to be doing a part in my business to make it successful, but I don't want to have to be doing it. I want it automated. So I'm going to pay people to do these duties. I'm going to pay somebody to hire people and recruit people. Hey, our so-and-so person is leaving in two weeks. We're going to need another social media manager. Can you put an ad out and interview some people for the social media manager? Because we're going to need somebody to start by this date, blah, blah, blah. Not me doing it because Alea's got 15 other things to do. So that's what I want to, that's my goal is to get to a point where my business is making enough money to where I can hire people and I can hire people for pretty much any duty that I feel like is going to help automate my business and help it scale quicker because it's not going to scale quicker when I'm doing everything myself. I'm doing, I'm wearing 20 different hats. I'm going to get overloaded and get tired and exhausted. And then the, the other businesses are not going to happen because I'm putting so much into lay madam. So that's my goal. I want this to be, this is supposed to be passive income for me. This is supposed to be a business that makes money while I'm sleeping. I wake up, I got $10,000 in the bank. I wake up tomorrow, I got $20,000. I got $30,000. I got $40,000. I got $50,000. You know, I don't want to have to wake up and like try to be hustled. Like I want this to be automated, passive income, multiple streams of income. That's passive. That's what we're talking about all 2024 and nothing less than that. OK, people out here selling digital products, making great money, you know, selling courses and different things. Passive income, instead of waking up trying to work a nine to five job, living paycheck to paycheck, and then your paycheck may change, your paycheck may not get higher. The cost of living is high as hell right now. I'm in the South and like a two to three bedroom is going to run you about 15 to two grand in the South. So if we're dealing with this type of high market rent right now in 2024, just imagine what it's going to be like next year or the next three years. We're going to probably be paying $2,000 plus for a one bedroom. You know what I'm saying? So this is the time to be building businesses, building automated, automated passive income. Try to have maybe 10 different streams of income, passive income at this point, because the cost of living is so high. And then people have the audacity to have a baby when they don't even, they're not even making that enough. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense for me to bring a child in the world and I'm not comfortable just taking care of myself with my income. I wouldn't want to put my child in a position to where uh, I make them feel like they're a burden or they were a mistake. You know, you just don't want to do that. You just want everything to be peaceful and flowy and, you know, everything to be taken care of because they deserve that. They didn't deserve to be born into this world to deal with your uh, financial problems. I just don't feel like that is fair to a child. And that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> well y'all that is the end of this video i just kind of wanted to go into that little spiel so y'all can kind of get a gist of what this channel is going to be about and for y'all to just kind of get a feel of me and my vibe and my personality and who i am <coughs> excuse me if you made it to the end of this video be sure to give me a thumbs up comment down below 
Also, I'm going to have the links to my Instagrams and my social medias and businesses in the description box. So do not worry about that. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because I am going to be dropping videos weekly. I don't know what particular days. It may be a little random, but just know that you will be getting videos weekly. All right, y'all. I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye. Thank you.